Welcome to the first ever Gardening with Friends show. It's all about gardening with my friends. Some of them are long time, some of them are first time friends. Would you like to garden together? Stay tuned and find out how. Now let's meet our first friend. So why this business for you? Um, well, I get to be outside constantly and get to have my dogs on the farm with me <laughs> and can't really beat that and just seeing the fruit, literally the fruits of your labor, you know, from from bud break to, you know, harvest and then to the, you know, the retail sales of everything, seeing a kid bite into an apple that you grew, that's a pretty <laughs> gratifying feeling there. Uh, so what's our job today? Uh, so today we're going to be uh, doing some apple pruning. So we're going to go up to the Brayburn trees and keep on chucking away. All right. First question, why? Why are we pruning these fruit <laughs> trees? Why do they have to be pruned? So we're pruning the fruit trees um, for uh, crop control. So apple trees tend to be biennial bearing, so that means they can bear every other year. So we want to keep them bearing fruit on a consistent yes, you'd basis. you'd prefer every year. Yeah, no, every <laughs> year, yeah, that, that works out better for the business. But um, so one way to lighten the crop load is by pruning. So um, we'll be taking off uh, anything that goes straight up, straight down, back into the tree, anything that's coming out into the row too far, anything that's sitting over another branch. Um, and there's no real wrong way to prune a tree. I'm going to prune different than Adam does. Oh, really? Or, you know, than Steve does. So everyone has their own different pruning techniques. Do I like mine better than some of theirs? Yeah, a little <laughs> bit, but. <laughs> so what's the first thing you see here? What are we going to cut out? How do you know what to cut out? So first things first, um, anything that's hanging down or going back in. So like this is starting to hang down. This is going to get into the way of all this growth. All right. So I'm going to take it all the way back up to here because I still want something up there. And I have this little, oh, okay. this little bud there. Um, and then same thing's going Because that's coming here. down into blocking that. Yeah, blocking the sunlight. So what, what we're pruning for, we're pruning for sunlight. Because apples, the, a red apple is basically just a sunburn on the apple. So if a leaf is covering over a part of the apple, that leaf outline is going to be on that apple. So we're pruning for light. That's really what we're doing. Um, and so these are some water spurs here. Get those out. This is crowding. This, I'm hoping, will crop and flop. So I want this to kind of fill in this area here. And once it fruits, here are the fruit buds right there. Hopefully it drags this oh, down. Okay. And then we get some fruit on it there. All right. So what fruit trees are pruned this time of the year? So this time of the year, we're pruning apples. If we prune, if we had, if we grew pears, you'd be pruning pears too. Um, and uh, like things like peaches, pear or peaches, plums, cherries, and stuff. You really wait till bud bud break oh, okay, to prune those. those. Yeah, to see what's died out and what's still there. And I know in the ornamental garden, there's things that we don't want to touch, things that already have buds on them, like rhododendrons or azaleas or dogwoods. Don't touch those, right? Um, yeah. I mean, if you want to see it, the flowers. If you want to see the flowers, don't touch them. Um, but if you, you know, sometimes you got to make that sacrifice some of those years. And if they're in people space. Yeah, if they're in people <laughs> space, if they're crowding out too much, take, you know, take them down a little bit. But um, yeah, be wary that you won't get the blooms on them. All right. Teach me what to do here. Where, where are we cutting? I'm saying right here. Does this come off? This is growing on the inside. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll cut them around there. That it, we'll take that off there. And how close to the tree? It's not, you know, you're within an inch, or does it matter? Yeah. Uh, with it depends on, so I still want new growth there. Eventually, this whole branch is going to have to come out because it's too big. Um, and this is a newer one, so if I want something, if I want a new growth, I won't take it flush down. If I want to renew some growth, which is the whole point of the high density system, is renewing growth, um, I'll leave just a little stub. It doesn't matter. The bevel cut and stuff doesn't really matter anymore, so they say. Um, so we're just looking to renew some growth here. So uh, something like this branch here, it's this big gargantuous thing. Always have a trusty saw out. And I'll be taking this entire branch down to the trunk out here because it's just taking up too much room. It's blocking too much sunlight and probably producing too much fruit. All right, show me how you're going to do that because I want to see that. So this is the type of saw somebody should use for pruning, this pruning saw. Yeah, this is, um, if we're not going through with the gas-powered pruner, I always have this on hand if we're just using our hand pruners. This is just a regular, you know, pruning saw here. And how close to the tree when you're going to cut this off? So 
being that I still want something new to grow here eventually, um, I'll probably leave uh, half an inch, okay, quart, three quarters of an inch there. So, and I see you're holding the branch while you cut it. Yeah, just to sturdy it up, just to make the cut a little easier. And then that op then opens up that whole area there, um, let more sunlight in. So, all right, well let's go prune a couple thousand trees. <laughs> So this one comes out, right? It's, it's coming down into the growth. Yeah, eventually that one will come out. But uh, what I like to do, I like to pick one lower branch there, start there, kind of see what you're working with around it. Um, and bigger cuts are always better. The less cuts I have to okay, make, that makes the better. Sense. So like this, this is blocking out everything there, so that's got to go. So, you know, you mentioned that uh, other people that prune might do it a little differently. Mm -hmm. It is a science, but it's also an art, right? Exactly. All, all depends on what you're looking for and what you see. So it's up to you know each person's point of view. This, this has got to come out, right? Yeah, that's got to right. come out. Right about there. You want new yep. growth on this? Yep. And you have that smaller one coming in right above it there. All so right. yeah, I want that whole thing out there. All right. There we go. Yep. This whole branch right here. It's not going to get sunlight, and it's just getting a little wiry there. So take that thing out. It's important to have the right tools. That one really went right through that big branch. <laughs> I would, you know, and I, my pruners aren't that good. I would have had to use a pruning saw on that. Yeah, this, it's always good to have a nice pair of pruners, nice and sharp. And something a little longer, give you a little bit more leverage yep. so you're not working your shoulders out too hard. So you always want to reach up as high as you can. That means less work I have to do when I come back through right, with you'll a lift. machine with a lift on there yeah, to get this so out. I'll do all the top work there. Um, and usually the top work's the last thing to get done. You'll see me out here in end of March, beginning of April. That's where, that's all I'm doing. I'm just up on that machine days and days and over in. Just get trying to get all the tops done before spring starts. All right, show me what to trim off on this one. So we have that, and then we do have these water sprouts here coming off. Don't. So when you say water sprout, how do you identify that as a water sprout? How do I know that's not like any other branch? So you can you can tell it's you know it's it's definitely last year's growth. There's no break in the growth throughout the whole whole branch there, especially with the amount of water and the amount of growth we had last year. We're gonna have a lot of them. So usually they're that purple color there. This will will put on an apple, right? Yes. These are the fruit buds right, right there. Right. So this would be this would be last year's growth. I see. This was the year before. All right. So water sprout, water sprout, water sprout. Yes. That's what I thought. And they yeah. come off. Yeah. Yeah. All I'd right. take those off. Yeah. If you don't do that, then your tree is it's gonna have a lot of foliage, which takes away from the fruit growth. Ah, I see. The tree might look ugly when you're done with it, but the uglier the better. In most cases. How many trees will you do? Seriously, <laughs> I mean, you can't even count them, right? No, I, our orchards are, I'm not even sure how many trees we actually have because we have different systems depending on when they were planted. So some tree, some orchards were 280 to 300 trees in an acre or less, and uh, up towards more around 900 trees to the acre on some yeah. other parts. So you're gonna be busy. Yeah, yeah. So we're about 20 acres all in all. So you've been pruning since November. Talk a little bit about the payoff of all this work. Just seeing that nice big red apple and then seeing your customer just bite right into it. <laughs> the bet. Noah, thanks so much. Ah, oh, no problem. Thanks for coming out. Got a favorite apple? Pink Lady, definitely. I'll have to try that when they're ready. For the next year, I'll be featuring professionals like Noah, but regular gardeners just like you. If you'd like to be part of Gardening with Friends, just send me an email or check out the website at everybodygardens.com. Until next week, a thousand more trees? I might be able to do a hundred. We'll see. See you then.